All right, everybody. I'm BJ from the 478. I greatly appreciate you tuning into my channel. This is episode five of this 1975 Caprice Classic build. And I just want to give you a quick rundown of what to expect and what, you, what I've done today and what I'm going to accomplish and what to expect on episode six. So as you can see, today I went ahead and, and took out all the seats, the carpet and all that good stuff. And I started running wires. Well, I actually got the dash pad back in um, with the two fours and two tweeters mounted up in the, underneath there. Um, and I also went ahead and soldered and wired in and plugged up the actual retro style radio. So if that doesn't look factory people, I don't know what does. But what that is, it's a retro style radio and it's Bluetooth and it comes with front rear and sub woofer outputs and um, USB and it's clean, I'm telling you. you. You ride somewhere and you can leave your top down and I guarantee you no one will try to steal that because they don't know any better. But nice piece, great sound. And if um, reason why I ran a DSP is to actually just boost it up and clean it up because I'm not running subs in here. I'm gonna run some bass shakers, and that's another reason why this seat is on. So the bass shakers have to be mounted underneath the seat. Um, I'm gonna make a custom bracket, so you will get the full effect of um, of all your music experience. Because if you don't know, bass is non-directional. And you really don't hear bass, you feel bass. So this gives the customer um, the illusion that he has bass in his cars because his seats will actually vibrate, which is gonna be neat because I don't know if y'all noticed. I remember I told you I do used to do build and do home theater. I still tinker around with it, but um, this car audio is my livelihood and this is what I enjoy doing and this is my career. So. I'm sticking with this. I can do a lot of other stuff, but this is my main go to tooth um, uh, uh, business that I like to do. So let me show you what I got going on with these wires. As you can see, everything I do is for a reason. Um, those wires are in the middle of the actual car. Um, the reason why I ran them in the middle is because it, I don't know if you see these water spots, but this is light rust. And the good thing about it is for where this car came from, this is not bad. Um, it was well taken care of. Um, it's no holes in the floor. Um, what I'm end up doing is, is sanding those spots down and saturate it with the rust stop. And then I'll line X this whole inside of this car. And then I'll put a carpet kit back in it. But that was one, another reason why I wanted to get it out. Um, the Linus is going to act as a deadener and a sealer so it's waterproof as well. But this was the key to where you run your, your stuff and it just helped me out a whole lot. And I've been doing it, but this just, it, it just, you know, um, puts the icing on the cake and maybe you can understand the reason why. You see the rust, that's where moisture and water got in. All right, that's where it's set. You see where I ran these wires? You don't see any rust. Okay. So RCAs, they're gonna be more susceptible to oxidation and speaker wires getting oxidized and all that good stuff. And when stuff gets oxidized, you're gonna end up um, having it to where you're gonna lose connection, the speaker's not gonna work because it's a positive and negative on that. And so you're gonna be scratching your head, thinking it's RCA jack and start changing stuff. We don't wanna break it down like that. And this should last for years if it's well taken care of. So. That's the reason why I did that. Now I do have a couple of grommets that's missing down here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, you can see the light through there. Yeah, I'm gonna be, I've got grommet fillers I'm gonna, I'm gonna put back up in there and all that good stuff. Like I said, I fixed a lot of wires that was up in underneath the dash and stuff was just hanging. Um, I'm, a, I'm ASE and I swear I have OCD so bad. That's the reason why I named my, my business OCD is for the simple fact that when I see a, a, a bunch of wires and stuff just everywhere, I, I just, it, it it does something to me. I have to fix it. So once I fix that, that made, made a whole lot um, uh, better for me because I knew where I stood and knew what I need to accomplish next. Now, as you can see, the hot wire is um, adjacent to the actual um, RCAs because if that hot wire is anywhere close 
and I can run it on the other side of this this um, this uh, drive shaft um, housing um, or the transmission housing, whatever. But if I if I run it over here, you're gonna have a better chance of getting engine noise. That's where you get your engine noise is because of the RCA's, you know, relaying sound to the amplifiers from the actual head unit. Then you got um, a hot wire that's drawing current and current goes back and forth. And it's just, once you get on the gas, the alternator produces more power, which you're gonna get a high pitch or a motor noise, as we say. And that's where you get engine noise from. Backgrounds will give it to you too, but you won't have any problems with this car because I'm gonna ground this thing up. I'm gonna reground all new grounds off, off of the front of the motor. I'm gonna do um, new grounds to chassis in the back. I'm gonna probably ground this about three or four times because back in the day when they used to do grounds, they would do stuff like this. And then that's, that's just a bracket bolted on top of the block. And then the block has silicone on it to to to, um, to actually seal up everything. So nothing is really metal on metal. And then it's just room for error. So this ground here, can you see how small it is? Yeah. So really, this is just going to the motor and this is actually going to the car. But if I put base in here or I, I run anything else, you're gonna end up burning that out and then you're gonna have start having problems with the fuse holders and then it's just gonna be in a world. Tour. So over here, as you can see where I have, I have um, the OFC stinger wire ran through a grommet. I drill this hole right here adjacent um, on the opposite side, like I said, to run this power wire here. And I ran it underneath this boot here. That way I can get a straight shot to where I'm going in the back. It's a whole lot better to change a hot wire out than it is RCA's. You know what I'm saying? RCA is going to give you your sound. If you don't have 12 volts back there, you know something either. You, you got a ring terminal messed up or you have a hot wire issue. So. <clears throat> long story short so what i'm gonna end up doing um in episode six and like i said i just wanted to touch bases with you i, I built the fuse box so i'll go ahead and get that carpeted and mounted up before i leave today um that fuse panel right here will actually have um open spaces for where he can add more 12 volt pieces if you want to put more lights in there because he's not from close to me so if he has problems or he want to add stuff to it can't really necessarily just hop in the car and bring it to me um, maybe he can do it himself up that way but i greatly appreciate his business more than anything so hopefully by next week next sunday i'll go ahead and do the next video and i should have all the rest of these panels in i'm wrapping them now um it's a couple more bono pieces i got to do on that center channel um i, I showed y'all what the center channel was going to go right underneath the bottom up there and i'll show you um before and after what it's going to look like and i'll get this lined up um, lined up before i leave today i'll go ahead and send this and get it sprayed so like i said i'm bj from the 478 you got to stay tuned i got a lot more content on this 75 bill if you have any questions um you know i still got this little raffle going on where it didn't have any any um money involving in this thing it was just on comments off my last video. Once it reached 200, I forgot about everybody. I will be announcing who gets those free parts and then we just go from there. But please stay tuned. Um, next Sunday or Monday, I should have this other video um, uh, taken and go ahead and upload. Now the Cadillac, the, with the, the 70, what is it, 73? What's that? No, I want to say this is 74 because of this. I, see, I learned something too. Well, long story short, this is the one with the supercharged Cadillac motor in it. And you got to love that, that painless wire harness in there. You notice you don't see any wires in there. So I'll be pulling all this stuff out, but I'm going to get done with my good buddy's car over here before I, I even attempt to, to, to take on anything else. I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to get his car back to him. That way I'll be done with this and maybe he has something else for me when he when he gets done. I think I got a motorcycle he wants me to do. So we're gonna go ahead and 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 release this to him hopefully in about another week and a half, maybe two weeks. 
right, that way you can catch all the shows and go represent the 478. I'm BJ. I greatly appreciate you tuning into my channel. Till next time, thank you.